Hello and welcome to another Daily Muppet. A little bit overdue on this video. I've been promising to come for a couple days. Just been pretty busy, but it seems like a good time. Now that the news is finally out there, it's easier to explain exactly what is going on. So once again, I'll do one of these little brief impromptu videos from home um, today just to, to try to explain the situation and what's going on. So let's roll back the clock to Tuesday and talk about what we revealed at that time and how it ties into all of the news you are seeing now and exactly what it all means. And I will add that I'm going to, I have a little bit, just a little bit of transfer news that I can add to this uh, video as well, um, specifically regarding Weghorst, Sabitzer, and a couple other things. So to start it off on Tuesday, we were given the information Last week, of course, there was the whole thing about Glazier's not sure they want to sell. Avram shows up to the final at Wembley, blah, blah, blah. And I said on Saturday it was all an act. It's all about the money, negotiations. Glazers want more money. That's it. They didn't like the valuations. They rejected essentially the initial valuations from both parties. Roll on to Monday. They had discussions between both parties and Rain Group. And in Tuesday's video, I mentioned that in those discussions, they were asked, both Sir Jim Ratcliffe, Qatar, and if there's anybody else involved yet unnamed, if they were willing to increase their offers and to ensure that they had some flexibility in their ability to pay or what they would be willing to pay for Manchester United because the valuations weren't high enough for what the Glazers wanted. At that time, I was specifically told the answer was yes, you can watch the clip I put back out on Twitter just in case you're, you're wondering um, because I don't have the ability to splice it in this video from my phone and where I'm at right now. Um, but what I was told is that it was looking positive, that they'd said yes, they'd be willing to bend on their offers as probably would the Glazers to hopefully meet in the middle and that they expected that things would move on to the next round of bidding and that it was purely down to money, nothing else, and that things were still moving forward on track. It was just a bit of negotiation, but they expected to move on to the next round. And by the end of the week, we would hear, by Friday, I believe I said, we would hear whether or not these groups had made it into the next round of bidding or if Rain were gonna start the process over and look for more bids. And the answer seems to be, yes, indeed, here we are. This is the news that has been coming out actually since Friday morning from Jamie Jackson and Simon Stone on Friday and the full brief out today that parties have been invited to Old Trafford. Apparently it's going to be at Old Trafford. That might be the new bit today to speak to Rain Group uh, representatives about the bids for Manchester United to do the due diligence, which means to get into the detailed financial records, have talks, and really get into formal, real serious discussions about the purchase of Manchester United, what they'd be willing to bid, what they'd be willing to pay, and where we go from here. Here's what I want to tell you first and foremost. Throw out every dollar amount you've heard before this stage. It does not matter. None of them were real bids. None of them were bids that could be accepted. Now is the real work where the parties are going to in really investigate the detailed finances of Manchester United and make actual bids. We will pay this much. This is the cash. These are the terms. This is how it's done to the Glazers for their share of the club, which is that 69% controlling stake. And um, nothing matters now except what ends up on that bid. On that bid that they put in following these discussions, um, that's all that matters in terms of pricing. So forget everything else, but think that probably what the Glazers are looking for, as I mentioned before, is something around $4 billion to them, probably a little under that. That's not a club valuation of $4 billion. That's to them for their 69%. So just don't worry about any more numbers at this point in time until we see if reports come out about the actual bids themselves. So remember, this was essentially a three-stage process. Um, first stage was that soft deadline. Who's interested? What kind of value do you put on the club? Major offers, minority offers, all of that. Review of those offers, further brief discussions because they weren't too happy with them originally. Now moving forward into the second stage, the second stage being now you need to dive in and actually give us serious bids because what's the third stage? We like this bid. We're in exclusive talks to sell the club. Let's hash out and hammer out the fine details. And that actually does not take very long. 
believe it or not. Um, because the parties buying will have the money if they reach that stage. So here's where it gets real interesting, where there's a couple things I want to touch on about this. Um, I've been very optimistic about this. I've said it's not a guarantee, but like I said earlier in the week, I'd heard that they were going to move forward. I'm really happy that I was that that was also correct. But mostly I'm happy because, of course, what does it mean? It means it's most likely that Manchester United are going to be sold and the Glazers are not going to be the owners any further and that it can still should be concluded in the time frame we're talking about end of April. That was reported in Ducker's article from The Telegraph that um, they were still looking at that timeline of end of April and that is what everybody wants. The way it's moving right now, that still should happen. That still should happen by end of April. It should still get done. Here's where it gets real interesting. This, this is meaningful. This is not speculative. This is nothing. This is meaningful stuff. The fact that majority offers, both the pub, two public ones, and something we'll talk about in a second, two public ones, made it into the next stage, what does that tell you? It tells you that the Glazers are looking at full sale of the club. If they were looking at minority stakes and they had minority offers that were workable for them, they wouldn't be moving these guys on to the next round. The fact that they have done so kicks the probability of the sale up from probably where I would say it's been at maybe 70% to I would now say 90% that the club will be full sold. It really just comes down to these talks and if they can reach a full agreement on the exact pricing and that's it at this point in time. And I do believe that they will. Um, the fact that they made it this far in the end it wasn't too big of an increase needed to get to the price that the Glazers were looking for. So I'm sure that they will get there. Um, the other little piece of information that has come out here, and I, I mentioned this earlier, that there's a party kind of sitting around the edge, potentially. There's other interested parties, but I talked about the thing with the commanders and all of that. And, sorry. Um, and basically that... Um, you know, essentially that um, there was another party and it seems to be reported that there's a third unnamed group that have been invited into these talks as well. It hasn't been revealed. I'll check and find out and see if it's one of the groups that I've mentioned before. Uh, I don't think it's HBSC and uh, Harrison Blitzer because they're, they made a huge bid for the Washington Commanders. It could very well be Stephen Pagliuca. There's a chance that that could be I don't know about Liberty Media, but you got the first hint. I, I said it earlier, that is a group that I would prefer and one of the people who had taken an interest. There was a hint saying that they might get involved in club ownership soon. That there was something to do with Tottenham, like the, the go-kart track or kart track that they're doing around Wembley, but that, um, you know, there might be some interest in them in actually getting involved in owning a club in England. I knew this to be the case, but um, whether they're moving into talks with regards to United is, remains to be seen, but there's an extra group that is involved, that is looking, and that has been apparently invited to these talks per uh, Keegan, and nobody knows who it is yet. I'll be seeing if I can find out who it is to pass that along, but um, that's gonna be something intriguing as well to see where things go from here, if there is in fact a third group that uh, could enter the race here. Um, that's always been a possible factor something we've discussed and, and talked about quite a bit. And uh, and obviously, I think that's good news no matter what, because the more parties that are involved, of course, the more likely the club gets sold. And that's the number one priority. So, um, so it's real interesting, a lot of intrigue, and it's gonna be quiet, I think, now over the next week or so, because there's a lot of due diligence, a lot of things, and then it'll probably be like the dam breaks loose at the end of this thing in the next one to two weeks where it's, these are the bids, here's where it's at, we're confident, we're this, we're that, wherever. And then it gets into that final stage of a selected bidder and working out the details probably before the end of the month so that April is the month where the takeover actually occurs. Um, interesting times. Uh, one thing I can tell you then, moving on to the final thing in terms of transfers, because this is all good, this timeline is all good. The club are working on transfers. There's nothing held up because of the sale. Yes, depending on how it goes, who buys this and that, it's going to change budgets, things like that. Nobody knows exactly the totality of budgets. But the club are working through things on a stage-by-stage -stage process as well in terms of priorities, what they're doing, ins and outs, all of that. And they're going to work through that regardless of how much budget and do as much of it as they can for their ideal setup. 
terrific. Now, um, a couple of things that I can say is that a striker's obviously is far and away the number one priority still and maintains that. Um, in terms of Weghorst, the the issue is he's really well liked, but at this point in time, it's said that it's he's he's uh, he's on the lower end of likelihood for being signed right now. And the reason is, of course, with a full striker purchase, big money striker being spent. And I'm not really going to get into this, but potentially the return of another player, it's unlikely that they need to buy another forward. That's just the current state of things. I've put them based on what I've been told on the lower end of likelihood that he gets purchased, even though I think he's done a good job. But really, they want to buy a, a big striker they can rely on an out-and-out -out striker, have Sancho, have Rashford, have Anthony, have Garnacho. That's a lot of players, plus potentially Ahmad Diallo returning, and then not the person I'm not going to get into talking about would be more than enough attackers. More, more, more than enough attackers. Um, in terms of Marcel Sabitzer, it's going to be assessed. Originally, I mentioned that the plan was they were hoping to get an option, and they were hoping to bring him in in, uh, in, uh, in summer, and they're still thinking about buying him permanently in summer. However, I think that would be sale dependent, like maybe a, like a little bit after in terms of who leaves and in terms of who he replaces, if Sabitzer is brought in, it might be in the circumstance that with the money spent on striker and goalkeeper, there's no budget for a big mid midfielder because it's unlikely that they bring Sabitzer and another midfielder in. So don't think of it like Sabitzer and De Jong or something extremely unlikely. Um, too many bodies playing the same position, basically. But um, there's interest in him. There's a chance. I would say he has a slightly higher chance than Weghorst because there's a chance he's the only midfielder bought. And that would be the news I have. Okay. So here's where we're at at the moment. Moving into the second round of talks. Jim Ratcliffe and Qatar. A third group invited. I'll try to find out who if I can. Um, or if we hear about it between now and then, everything going according to plan, club preparing for the summer, expectation right now is a high probability of full sale. Okay, thank you for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on. See you in the next one.